शॉर्टेज ऑफ ऑक्सीजन hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy it is a neonatal 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 encephalopathy due to de deprivation of the oxygen and limited flow of the blood to that area that causes brain damage and due to which there can be encephalopathy which, which can be characterized by hypotonia hypotonia cerebral palsy seizures intellectual and development dis disabilities and learning disabilities Of oxygen in the blood, impaired, which impairs the which impairs the functions. Ischemia is a shortage of the blood flow to the brain, which causes ischemia of that area. And encephalopathy is an umbrella that includes any types of neurological dis dysfunction. This may include and feeding problems. It can also cause depressed reflexes and you, you know that there are some primitive primitive reflexes in the newborn such as morose reflex sucking reflex rooting reflex and there are many other reflexes around 50 to 20 reflexes if there is a damage to that if there is encephalopathy there will be a decrease or there will be insufficient inefficient reflexes that may result and sometimes they may result with hypotonia increased tone and sometimes initially they are hypotonic also there can be some seizure activity because of this ischemia and hypoxia we will follow definition risk factors clinical factors clinical features staging diagnosis treatment and some complication once again we will repeat the definitions which is very important anoxia it is a term used to indicate the presence of the complete loss of oxygen as a result of number of primary causes hypoxia refer to an arterial concentration of oxygen which is less than the normal that causes insult of that area of that system on that organ ischemia refer to the blood flow to the cell or organ that is insufficient to maintain the normal function hi is usually referred to the birth injury it is a broad term used to refer to any harm that the baby experience at or near the time of birth other terminology that has been used is birth asphyxia perinatal asphyxia and neonatal encephalopathy there are all same things initially the more common was birth asphyxia because as you know that asphyxia can occur quickly also because of some disease in the mother that causes limitation of the placenta that results in hypoxia so there is a throughout phase of hypoxia throughout the pregnancy result asphyxia plus there was when the when the birth asphyxia was labeled everybody knew there is some problem in the birth 
so it was very difficult some it was sometimes very difficult to explain to the attendant that problem is not that it occurred during delivery because people go into action if there is some problem at birth as you know that so sometimes there is some ongoing problem going on in the like hypertension diabetes uti hiv tuberculosis and many other diseases which impair the function of the placenta that can lead to asphyxia in the newborn now how will you this is all theoretic theoretically that it is due to hypoxia it is due to ischemia now first of all how will you know how will you know that this is a case of hi so history is very important as in every case in this case is also important usually how does the patient present the attendant unfortunately if the patient is referred from hospital also do we don't have a very good documentation most of time it is not shown that was the patient had any history of resuscitation or had any problem during delivery most of them and most of them don't write the abgar score also which also make the things more complicated but in the history you can ask the parents is there any history of delayed pride the patient usually say that bachcha der se roya ya bachche ko maar ke rulaya so these are the things which usually comes in the history ki der se roya isko oxygen di ganda pani pe liya tha us waqt so these types of things do appear in the history so you one has to take a very good history for asphyxia to be very simple definition of asphyxia or to to be very simple to explain the asphyxia is if there is a failure to establish respiration after birth so i repeat it it is a failure to establish respiration after birth is hi for medical doctors and for med for, for medical uh, people one should know how to assess the child of newborn there is one thing which is very common you must all be knowing that that is a abgar score abgar score one should when every every medical student every medical staff should know how to take a abgar score uh we will talk about the abgar score in the next slide first of all there are certain criteria in hi if there is a profound metabolic acidosis at birth or even before birth before birth it is taken from the scalp blood and after birth it is usually taken by the umbilicus if there is a persistence of low abgar that is less than 3 for more than 5 minutes it causes severe type of asphyxia if there is a neurological sequelae patient appear with seizures coma or hypotonia this is also feature of asphyxia multiple organ involvement there can be lung involvement because there is a hypoxia it can affect every part of the body including the major organs everything uh one should also know about the epidemiology but the stage is cause is around 23% of the which is 23% of the neonatal that worldwide so it is a very important topic and one should not ignore this and one thing more is that one should know how to go for the nrp neonatal resuscitation because it is said that if resuscitation is done properly more than 90% can be benefits and you can help the poor patient from these problems so first of all you have to detect if you detect you can lower down the mortality and morbidity of asphyxia you know that the problem in pakistan all all the ch children are not delivered at hospital there are many home deliveries more than more than 60% are delivered at home rather than the hospital but in hospital also 
they are not well equipped with good doctors or technicians. So they are not being assessed and the early resuscitation is not done, which result to the burden to the society with birth asphyxia, seizure disorder, and other problems. It is one of the one top 20 leading cause of the burden of disease in all the age group, according to WHO. And it is the fifth largest cause of death, children under the age of five years. More than a million children who survive but this year develop problems such as cerebral palsy, mental retardation, learning difficulties, and other disabilities. As already told you, it is around one to six percent per thousand live birth in developed countries. 25% die or have multiple disabilities, and they die because of very minor problems, which can be reversible. We will talk later about on that. 4% have mild to moderate form of cerebral palsy and 10% have developmental delay. There are many causes as far as the causes. So antenatal care is very important. Once you get a patient with HIE, one should take a very thorough history of the mother. It is not, uh, we understand that once the damage has occurred, you cannot do much better, much, much to the patient. But may be his first child. A patient might be suffering from diabetes, might be suffering from hypertension. So these could be addressed and should be addressed so that in the next pregnancy, they should be controlled and this type of problem don't occur. So if there's a problem, usually, if, as, as you know, if there's a problem, one should be recommend that this patient should be delivered at some tertiary hospital where good antenatal care should be given to that patient. So there can be many problems in the mother that can lead to HIE, that can lead to insufficiency of the placenta, like that's a cardiac problems due to any cause that can cause any anaphylactic problem in the mother, any condition like a epilepticus, hypovolemia, diabetes, HIV, hypertension, any autoimmune disease, all cause ischemia, all cause for vasculitis, that can lead to the damage to the, that can damage to the fetal because of the placental insufficiency. There can be problem in the utero placental, there can be placental apraxial, heart prolapse, during delivery, there can be uterine rupture, there can be hyperstimulation with certain drugs like oxytocin. Sometimes there's a complication in the fetal, like fetal maternal hemorrhage, quintuin transfusion, severe isomian hemolytic disease, cardiac arrhythmias. So one should, there are many causes. Uh, I think so, uh, this is uh, just repetition. You know, in some studies, in some studies they are found to have mortality rate around 23 to 30%. And, uh, 10 to 20 percent have out of 80 percent who survive of HI, 80 per 20 percent have moderate serious disabilities like seizures and mental retardation. There is no uh, prediction predominance of the race, any race which have more, there is nothing like this. Sex is, has no male or female baby, no problem. Most often the condition is not infant who are at term at birth. As already told you, there's an inadequate oxygenation of the blood, blood, maternal blood from hyperventilation to the anesthesia, planetary heart disease, respiratory failure, carbon monoxide poisoning. Low maternal blood pressure from acute blood loss, spinal anesthesia, compression of the vena cava and aorta by private uterus. Sometimes there is an inadequate relaxation of the uterus to, to permit placental filling as a result of uterine tetany caused by the administration of excessive oxytocin. So one should be very conscious about the drugs that are being used during delivery and before delivery to the mother. Sometimes these are avoidable. Impedance to the circulation of the blood through the umbilical cord as a result of compression or knotting of the cord. 
you can you can get a history of for compression the neck in all these things you can get vessel insufficiency may be due to toxemia and post maturity so post maturity doesn't mean that the child will be good. if it is crossed the 42 weeks so there is a chance of asphyxia because there will be placental insufficiency in these patients Clinical presentation, usually they can present with the pelar, cyanosis, they can present with the apnea. Apnea, as you know, that if there's a cessation of respiration for more than 20 seconds, with or without bradycardia. There can be a slow heart rate, unresponsive to stimulation, or non specific initial sign of uh, all the sign of HIE. In encephalopathy, child may be depressed consciously, may be very lethargic, may be mild to moderate or severe. There can be severe hypotonia and weakness, and there may be a posture with lack of flexion muscle, which is usually symmetrical. In severe HIE, premature reflexes are absent. They can also present with seizure disorder. 50% do have seizures. 50% are asymptomatic as far as seizure is concerned. There can be there can be severe seizure, there can be subtle seizure, there can be tonic, there can be chronic, any type of seizure can develop. Depend upon the severity or the area the brain has involved or the area in which there is an insult or hypoxia, ischemia to that area, depends on that. This is you must be knowing all about the Abgar score. Abgar means A P G A R. There are five components A P G A R. Okay. So these five has three components 0, 1, 2. How high? Listen it very carefully, and you should learn by heart this Abgar score. It is very important. And you should know how to do a gas score. So if there, if she, first of all, you see the appearance, you see the skin color. So the good sign is two, the between sign is one and zero is very bad, okay? Two is all normal, zero is worse and one is between all this. So if the patient is pink, we label as two, if it, has, if it is pink, but they have a peripheral cyanosis, we label as one. And if it is totally central and peripheral cyanosis, it is zero. Then we go for the pulse rate. We, we usually go for the heart rate because it is very difficult to assess the pulse of the newborn. So we usually go for the, we go with the stethoscope, heart, and we, we measure the heart rate. In some centers, pulse oximetry is also being kept, but it is sometimes because of the peripheral tool, tool peripheries, the results are not very promising. So heart rate should be given, should be done for all patients. If it is more than 100, if it's more than 100, it is two. If it's less than 100, it is one. And if it is, there's no heart rate, it's zero. Remains, the patient has no response. It is zero. If it is, if the patient gives the response, it is grimace. And if the patient, if we put a catheter in the nose and or in the throat, the child will respond with coughing and sneezing. If that is present, the score will be two. Then we come to the activity. The activity if the patient is hypotonic, lethargic, there will be no activity. The child will be limp. If there's a flexion, the patient, the baby is in a flexion position, we label as one. And if there is a flexion plus extension, so there's active movement, active motion, we label as two. The respiration, if the zero is when there is no respiration, in one, we have irregular respiration like the child may be having gasping respiration, sinus stroke respiration, or very acidotic respiration. 
and in two there will be a regular expression it will be a normal expression we label as two so how to interpret it, this fgar score so it is said if the score is more than 7 it is normal if the four score is between 5 to 7 it is mild and if it is 3 to 4, three to four, four it is moderate and if it is less than 3 we label as severe but asphyxia or severe hi okay after that you have you have to also assess for the severity of hi so there is a staging of hi stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 okay you have to do this staging of the hi so that because stage is very important you to know what sort of the prognosis how will you have to manage this case okay suppose that if it is stage 1 it means the outcome is good in these cases so you have to do not to, you not have to think much about that and you know must have to worry it is not only that you are worried you have to answer the parents also so once you do the staging you should be more confident in telling the patient what is the problem and how what is the severity of the problem if you have done the staging you can talk to them because when the child is delivered and you know that especially in this part of world there are number of questions by many people so one should know one should learn how to do the staging if you will do the staging in two to three patients while in posting or you can also do at home by imagination you will learn how to take so there are several pa several parameters you have to see for the level of consciousness muscle tone posture tender reflex myoclonus moral reflexes you have to see for the pupil you have to see for the seizures you have to see for the eeg finding you have to see for the duration of all this process and finally you will find the outcome level of the consciousness you have it is a hyper alert lethargic or suppressed or coma tone you have to see for normal hypotonic and flaccid it will be very clear in the chart posture you have to see the normal posture this is a reflection or this is the surveyed myoclonus is present it is present it is absent so this is the way you also see have to you have to see the eeg finding low voltage or it is a burst pattern you have to see for for, for the duration for how long these symptoms are there and after that you have to know the outcome if it is stage 1 it is the outcome is good stage 2 is a variable and stage 3 it is very dangerous one the child may die or may have very severe deficiencies mri is also done usually it is a for the diagnosis usually it is a history what is important and while you go for the fgar score third you go for the staging of the hie this will you if you have done this you can easily reflex you can easily diagnose the case but sometime we have to take some help with mri or we have to go for the ultrasound and certain investigations to document the problem and the severity of the problem so that we should be managed accordingly essential criteria as already said earlier it is a metabolic acidosis ph is less than 7 early onset of encephalopathy persistence of fgar score less than 3 neonatal neurological sequelae like seizures coma hypotonia and multiple organ involvement there are no specific tests to confirm or exclude diagnosis of hie because diagnosis is mostly based on the history physical examination neurological examination and laboratory evidence laboratory studies certain laboratory studies should also be done as i have already told you that sometimes we don't get a very good history 
and sometimes there is a hidden the most of the centers don't have the courage to say that there was some problem at birth they just refer the patient without giving details so in that case it is very difficult for anybody to diagnose so some so for that then we have to go for the investigation and in the, in this stages the investigation is very important uh, we can go for the uh, cbc first of all it is not written here we can get uh, 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 anemia there can be blood loss there can be pancytopenia there can be thrombocytopenia because of hypoxia if you go for the serum electrolyte you can get uh, hyponatremia because of the sidh so brain damage and it can be secondary it can there can be hypo, hyperkalemia and hyponatremia that can be due to the renal function problem there can be high creatinine also and there can be the creatinine clearance may be very low we can also go for the cardiac and the liver enzymes which shows an increase in the enzyme levels ct and aptt may be prolonged because of the limitations because the hypoxia have hurt the liver also and you know that pt is basically is the liver dependent abg should be done to to assess for if there is any hypoxia hypercapnia or hypnopnia hypercapnia or hypercapnia so it is easy to manage these things when you get investigations this is the eeg finding as you can see this is the burst facts burst pattern of the eeg in mri you can see this ischemic changes is in brain you can see the ischemic changes periventricular okay as you can see this intense area upper intense area this is suggestive of encephalopathy this can be suggestive of hie so what is the treatment treatment as far as the treatment is concerned medical treatment is important initial resuscitation and stabilization it is a it is very important one should know one should, once who has done the ward and who are i don't know what when your ward will start or it will not it will start or not i don't know but <laughs> you should see in the youtubes and other centers other other videos how to do the resuscitation because resuscitation dramatically improves the condition the first minute is a golden minute and much much can be done for these patients if 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 i'm very confident that know how to do the nrp and if you get a patient with but asphyxia you can change the world of that child if the patient is going into severe asphyxia if good resuscitation can go they can go into mild asphyxia or stage 1 asphyxia which improves the quality of life and quality of parents life also it is so one should know the procedures of nrp close attention should be paid upon the oxygen delivery perfusion status and avoidance of hypoglycemia and hyperthermia in this now a lot of attention is currently focused on resuscitation with room air now it is said that oxygen is also not also very important the room air is also su is sufficient for that but one should clean the airway clinical trial some clinical trials have been done which shows that room air resuscitation for infant with perinatal for perinatal asphyxia is as effective as resuscitation with 100% oxygen so international liaison committee on resuscitation recommended now that initial neonatal resuscitation with concentration of oxygen between 21 to 
uh, HI sometimes manage, which is new, that is through therapeutic hypothermia, where the baby body is cooled down below temperature of 33 degree Fahrenheit to slow the cascade effect that causes vital damage. This allow the baby brain to recover and reduce the level of disabilities. So it should be done. The thing is that it should be done within six hours of life. And after 24 hours, there's less benefits of doing all these things. This therapeutic index, so therapeutic, therapeutic hypothermia procedures should be carried for at least three days, 72 hours. This prevent the further damage known as the reperfusion injury, which occur when normal oxygen and blood flow are restored too quickly to the brain cell. It works in the stabilize the brain cells and pre prevent, prevent further damage to the brain. Supportive care is very important. They most some of the HI patient may need ventilator for oxygenation. It is usually done to maintain the blood gases, acid based status in the physiological ranges and prevent hypoxia, hyperoxemia, hypercapnia, and hypo, hypocapnia. Infant with HI are also risk of pulmonary hypertension and should be monitored. As you know that. In the fetal circulation, there is a, what happens, there is a in the pulmonary pressure as far and there is a decrease in the systemic pressure. After the baby is born, it is reverse. The pulmonary pressure is decreased and the systemic pressure is increased. But in cases of asphyxia, they, there is a persistence of pulmonary hypertension that causes more damage to the baby. So sometimes nitrous oxide is, should be given to this patient to affect, to control the persistent pulmonary hypertension. There's a role of magnesium sulfate infusion. The infusion is effective in improving the outcome of infant with severe perinatal asphyxia when it is given early as early as six hours in com combination with the other modalities. This magnesium sulfate is given in stage two and three type of HI as already discussed before. It is a neuroprotective agent. Uh, as already said that perfusion and blood pressure management should be done. That the mean pressure, blood pressure above 45 is necessary to avoid decreased perfusion of the brain. So it decreases several perfusion. It should be avoided. Hypertension in the, is common in brain, brain in the infant with HIE encephalopathy due to myocardial dysfunction, capillary leak syndrome, hypovolemia, hypertension. It should be treated promptly. Sometimes dopamine and dopamine is, is recommended to keep the adequate cardiac output in these patients. This is the uh, picture. It is wrapped in the food to keep the temperature below the normal. As already said, it should be applied. This procedure should be done, should be started below six hours of birth and should be maintained for at least 48 to 72 hours. It is a very promising therapy, therapy for the for mild to moderate cases of HI. But for as for everything, hypothermia also have side effects. They can cause thrombocytopenia, reduce heart rate, subcontinuous fat necrosis, and overcooling or potential cold injury hypothermia, cold injury syndrome. So one should keep a good eye 
while treating with hypothermia to these patients. There are many complications. As you know that if there's a hypoxia, they can cause problem anywhere in the body. If, this is, if the brain is involved, it can cause asphyxia, it can cause CD disorder, it can cause intraventricular hemorrhage or anything. But they can have a permanent damage in the long term, they can have a feeding difficulty, they can have a reading difficulty, they can have ADH, they can have multiple mental retardation. As you know, if, they, if it affects the lung, it causes hypoxia that alter the surfactant. And if there is surfactant alteration, there will be RDS. If there will be RDS, there can be increased pulmonary hypertension that can further compromise the KB. If the if causes hypoxia, it can cause cardiomyopathy, it can cause myocarditis, it can cause myocardial dysfunction, it can cause hypotension that leads to leoperfusion, that leads or further deteriorate the condition. There can be metabolic disorders like hypoglycemia because of the increased metabolism, hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia is usually secondary to in hypoxia to the parathyroid hormone. There's a transient effect hypoxia to the parathyroid hormone that leads to hypoxia. There can be hyponatremia, it is secondary to the liver problem, to the kidney, kidney problem because they can cause urine table acidosis, they can, they can cause kidney damage disease. Hyponatremia can also secondary to SIDH. They can also cause DIC if the patient is not improved. They have coagulopathy, increased coagulopathy because of the reduce in the clotting factors. So there can be, patient can go into DIC. The treatment is concerned. Uh, the treatment of the seizures is concerned. Current therapies available to treat the neonatal seizures are phenobarbitone and phenytoin, which we usually use as a long term, and benzodiazepam as a short term. Initially, we give diazepam, repeated diazepam. We can repeat a diazepam with three to five minutes. And we have to give the long term phenobarbitone or phenytoin to the patient. Phenytoin, sometime clonazepam, and sometime now we are also using levotracetin. That is also giving good results while, while managing the seizures disorders. If there is a severe HIE, as, uh, uh, it's, as you know that it affects the GIT. And if it affects the GIT, it causes necrotizing enterocolitis. So one should be very conscious while starting the child with HI. Usually, there are different studies. Most of them say that one should restrict the diet. If there's a patient who's having severe, severe HI, one should restrict the diet to oral feeding for at least three days. That can further aggravate the NS and NAC. So in that case, parental route is recommended with very conscious because we have to give, we have to keep the eye on electrolyte imbalance. So while, and sometimes, and whenever you are giving the feed, you have to monitor for the signs of necrotic enterocolitis. As you know that it can be, they usually present with abdominal distension, blood in the stools, very shiny abdomen, and x-rays are pathogenic in which we have. We go for the x-ray abdomen, we get a gaseous shadows, and there is a intestinal pneumonitis. It is pathogen for necrotizing enterocolitis. 
So there are some poor predictive values for the death or disabilities after HIE. So these are low FGAR score, the patient who needs CPR, delayed onset of spontaneous bleeding that is more than 20 minutes. If the seizures occur in less than 12 hours or if the seizures are occurring, it is very difficult to treat. Severe prolonged EG finding, including bus suppressions, prominent MRI basal ganglia as already showed in the previous slides, if there's an oligurea or any urea, or there's an abnormal neurological examination, within 15 days of life, the child is very hyper hypertonic or hypertonia or have some contraction. These are related to the uh, poor productive values or usually within years. Thank you.